massive weekend for New Zealand sports fans across all codes. But for leagueies, Willie, it doesn't get much better than this. No, not, not only we get to watch one Australian-New Zealand contest, we get two tests this evening, two opportunities. As you said, it's hard to win games over there. It's hard to get the, the wood over the enemy in Australia, but we get two bites at it tonight, two exciting opportunities to beat them in their own backyard. Yeah, well, up first it is the Kiwi Ferns and Crystal. They were so close two weeks ago. Is the belief there that tonight could be the night? Oh, definitely. I have all the belief and the faith in the Kiwi Ferns and the performance that they put on, obviously, against the um, Jillaroos in the first game in Townsville. You know, we saw glimpses of brilliance there, and I just think that they have so much more to offer. And I know Ricky Henry would have taken the team away, and obviously they improved on some of those things against Tonga, but I'm just so excited to see what they can produce tonight. Absolutely. I think last time it was 54-4 to um, over there in the World Cup in the final, so this time, you know, it was 16-10 the last time these two teams played. A lot of mouth-watering matchups, um, a lot of quality players across the, the board and this uh, NRLW has been a find for this uh, Kiwi team as well. So I'm looking forward to it still. We are looking forward to the build-up. We're very lucky to have Daryl Halligan on the ground in Melbourne and he's very lucky to have a special guest working alongside him, Madison Bartlett. There you are. Kia ora team. How are you going? Yes, welcome Storm. Amy Park here and it's been a beautiful day here in Melbourne. Blue skies over here, although as the, uh, as the sun goes down there's a little breeze coming from the north that might uh, dissipate in the women's game. Lucky to have Madison Bartman. Welcome Madison to the team. Um, just 12 months ago you were at the World Cup with this uh, Kiwi Ferns team. They've gone from Townsville to Eden Park here to Melbourne over the last three weeks. What sort of improvement have you seen? Yeah, obviously a huge improvement from the final at the World Cup. The defence has been really good, but obviously it's going to be a huge ask today. You know, we need those uh, halves to lead us around the park well. And then, yeah, we've got a good crack at the girls. I love the custodian. Her name's Arpi Nichols. Um, I think she, in one word, is complete. She is the epic player of this team. Yeah, she's really underrated, I believe. She's a phenomenal athlete, and I think in that first game in Townsville, she managed to save three tries on her own. So really good to have her back at the back this week, and I can't wait to see what she does. Are you confident we can get a win here? I am, I am. I think, you know, it depends on who turns up today. So, yeah, the girls, I'm backing them, and I hope they get the win. Well, I'm with Madison, guys, of course. It's the third of a, a Quinella here for the afternoon on a big race day here in Melbourne as well. The Kiwi Ferns into the Kiwis does not get any better than that. No, it certainly doesn't. Thank you so much, team. We will catch up with you shortly. For now, let's take a look at how the Dillers will run out tonight. Once again, they are captained by 33-year-old Ellie Brigginshaw, who plays halfback today. She's one of the most experienced players in the game, playing 33 NRLW games for the Broncos and making her international debut 10 years ago. Lauren Brown played 43 minutes off the bench against the Kiwi Ferns in Townsville, but is starting tonight, replacing Keely Davis, who drops to the reserves. Brown had a fantastic year for the Titans, playing a mix of halfback and dummy half across her 11 games. And the Ferns will be keeping a close eye on Tamika Upton, the 2023 Daly M winner, who was outstanding in the Jillaroos win a fortnight ago. Of the team's seven line breaks that night, the fullback made three of them. And playing locks, Mai Matalfa was the only four to crack 100 run metres in Game 1. She will look to lead from the front once again. And speaking of Samaima, she had a chat with her Raiders teammate, Madison Bartlett, a little earlier. The Jillaroos line speed is some of the best line speed that I've ever seen. Is that a focus this week in camp? Oh, 100%. I think across the board, not only our line speed, like our physicality, you know, our push support, our ability to be, for, be there for our teammates um, is what we're focusing on um, heavily this week. You know, as a middle pack, I know we could be better and I know that was heavily on us and we're focusing on that. And I know our back five does a great job in, in making those tough carries. So defensively, us middles has got to aim up today. And, you know, that was a key focus, uh, focus on us this week is heavily on our individual performances. And, you know, we made sure that our preparation this week we didn't leave any stones unturned. And you've got two girls debuting today, um, Emma Manselman and Ja'Kai Whitfield. How excited are you to see them out on the field today? I'm really looking forward to seeing Ja'Kai and Emma out there. You know, with the NRLW, we saw glimpses of what they were able to showcase there. And for them to, to buy their time and, and earn that jersey, essentially, is I'm really looking forward to playing alongside them and not against them because they've got so much potential. And, you know, the future's bright for them. They'll be wearing these jerseys. I know it because them two are both hard workers and they, they don't want to let go of that jersey. And in true Mimes form, I know you've been nursing a little bit of an injury this season. How is your shoulder going? 
Uh, the shoulder's going good, you know, um, we've prepped that really well the last couple of fortnights, um, just making sure that um, it heals well. I'm lucky in the sense that I've got really great medical staff that make sure that I'm right for this game and, you know, it's one more game, one more game to live it out there on the field and um, I'm looking forward to doing it for my teammates and, you know, it's Kezi's big 15 test match that's really hard to get and to see her lead the team and to see her earn that her stripes is, I'm really looking forward to making this memorable milestone um, for her as well as our debutante. Good luck today, Mimes, and play well. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Right, well, let's take a closer look at this Dillera side, and we can't not talk about Tamika Upton. The Delium NRLW winner had a breakout season, Willie. Really continued that in the Dillera's jersey as well. How do the Kiwi Ferns stop her? Can they stop her? Yeah, I think they can. Her danger is when she's in, in the open field and she picks her lines and support runs. If the, if the New Zealand team can be dominant in the ruck, minimise the, the time and control the time that the Australians have to play with and get a set line, as long as they can pick her out and find out where she is and trying to be dangerous, then they'll go a long way to controlling what she does and the impact she has in the game. Because she is, she's a fantastic player. She's had a wonderful season. She almost won the grand final for Newcastle on her own. Um, she's up there with Nathan Cleary, I, I think, as two of the best players in our game, full stop. And full stop. such is her danger tonight. And it, you know, there's some wonderful players in the NRLW and she's the leader of that pack. Yeah, she's great to watch. Well, Lauren Brown gets the start at dummy half, Crystal, over Keely Davis. She's clearly an attacking threat, but do you think there's an opportunity to target her on defence? Yeah, I think the Kiwi Ferns could target her there in the middle, but I think Lauren will hold her own. I think the, the thing about Lauren Brown, she knows how to set up a try for the Titans. She had 13 try assists in 11 games, so she definitely knows how to set tries up, so she will be a threat through the middle. I also think that she brings a, another kicking dynamic through the middle third. She's got a good boot on her. Um, she also has a good um, record for field goals as well, so if it came down to the wire, then you know she'll be the go-to for the yeah, Jillaroos. about it. There's nothing she can't do. She's an athlete. You know, She's played high-level soccer. She's played sevens for Australia. I mean, she's got the speed, but also, you know, getting the starting position amongst a very good four-pack, I, I think you're going to see the best of her and no better platform to, to show your wares. Well, let's move on to our Kiwi Ferns. This is how they will be running out. Last week's player of the match, Mele Hufanga, who has been unstoppable in the centres for the Kiwi Ferns this past fortnight. She made 13 tackle busts against Tonga, one shy of the 14 she recorded against the Jillaroos two weeks ago. A couple of changes from last week's team on the bench for the Ferns, with Ash Quinlan and Jasmine Fogavini into the side. Quinlan played 5-8 in game one, and it'll be interesting to see how coach Ricky Henry uses her tonight. And now another player who returns for the Ferns is fullback Arpi Nichols. We heard Madison talking about her. She played a massive role in keeping the Jillaroos to just three tries a fortnight ago. And for the New Zealand National Anthem to be performed by Casey Marito, followed by the Australian National Anthem performed by Kai. <laughs>
down the cheeks of Shannon Martor, three times a Mulberry All-Star. Here she is in the green and gold of Australia playing New Zealand. Of course, the Gillaroos on a 15-test winning streak, including winning their last seven straight against New Zealand. Australia's last defeat was against the Kiwi Ferns back in 2016, the Anzac Test in Newcastle. So that's the record. A long and proud winning streak for the Australians. But the Kiwi Ferns are here to break it under the guidance of Racine McGregor and Georgia Hale. They will set up for the pre-match Harker. Challenge is thrown down. The Harker led by 21-year-old Maya Hill Moana. Nice touch with Jess Surgis at the end of it. There's some Maya Taufa. So Maya Hill Moana leads the Harker, but she will come off the bench. The only change made by Ricky Henry, Nevada George, to start this test. Tasha Gale, do you read anything into the late change to the Kiwi Ferns front row? Well, the only thing I can imagine, Matty, is that. He's going to start Nevada George, who he'll, he'll hit hard and hit often out there. And then when that softening period is over, as they refer to it, Maya Hill Moana comes charging through and her impact off the bench could be the difference today. West Tigers, Ja'Kia Whitfield on a wing for Australia and on debut for the Gillaroos, her and Emma Manzelman, the debutantes in this game, both for Australia. Emma to come off the bench in Jersey 17, the former Knight now, North Queensland Cowboy, and Abigail Roach. Coming to Rugby League from Rugby Union, playing four tests for the Kiwi Ferns now, and here's that Harker all over again. Absolutely love it, Maya Hill Moana. Can't believe she's only 21 years of age, about to play her 10th test match for New Zealand, started back in 2020, three years ago. It's a little 18 year old, I believe. What a leader, what a future. It's a youthful pack for Kiwi Ferns coach, Ricky Henry, three 21 year olds, and then there's 20 year old Otessa Bullet. Nearly 10 Kiwi Ferns having their first season of international rugby league at open level, one of them who's been there before is Melat Hufanga in the centres. A real weapon. We're underway in the final tests of the women's competition in the Pacific Championships and straight away from the kickoff, the Australians get a result, a mix up at the back by the Kiwi Ferns who allow the kickoff to go dead. So the Australians will get it straight back, Tasha. Absolutely not the start. Ricky Henry was um, looking for with the Kiwis. He wanted them not to get off to such a slow start, but here they are in a dangerous situation within the first minute. Lift the Sharp, the referee in this Stay one. On. And on. it's Tyler Nathan Wong with a very early goal line dropout. 
They should have been taking hit up four or five by now. Instead, they're forced into stopping Kezi Apps. In milestone test number 15. Little marker there for Kezi. As Shannon Martor thunders onto the ball straight down the middle and takes a good tackle from Brooke Anderson around the legs. Brigginshaw with the Aussies straight on the attack in this one. Sergis. Wrapped up by Blaine Tafanga. Brigginshaw finding Brown onto Aiken and it's off Australia and it's Clydesdale. The ball bounces forward. Play on the ruling. They've ruled no hands in there and Chapman takes some tackling. Here's Aiken. Brown shows it and finds her starting front rower, Shannon Martor. Gold Coast Player of the Year in the NRLW competition. Brigginshaw from 10 out, Olivia Koenig. Takes a good tackle. Again, it's Brooke Anderson. Brown, again, Martor rolls her sleeves up. So busy to start this game after that emotional anthem for Shannon. Brown long to Aiken from 10 metres out. She takes the line on. This is good defence from the Kiwi Ferns early. The Aussies throwing plenty at them, and now it's knocked on by Isabel Kelly. Knock on. A rare mistake, but a lucky break for the Kiwi Ferns. They've gotten off to a shocker start with a goal line dropout, but their lion-hearted defence that they showed two weeks ago against the Gillaroos is still there with them as they defended their try line and turned the Gillaroos away. Let's say good afternoon, good evening to Lara Pitt. Good evening, Maddie and Tasha. Wonderful to be here for this, the first Gillaroos and Kiwi Ferns game at Amy Park. The players, I can tell you, enjoyed checking out the immaculate surface before kickoff, but they did notice quite a gusty breeze to contend with, up to 48 kilometres an hour swirling around in the middle of the field. It seems to be moving, but uh, at the moment, I can tell you, left to right of your screen, so it should favour the Gillaroos for this first half. Olivia, Thank you, Lara. Yes, yeah, starting role for Yasmin Clydesdale in this test for the Gillaroos. Listed to come off the bench in Jersey 15 as Taufa stops Hale, a couple of tackling machines head to head there. So Mama Taufa for the Gillaroos and Georgia Hale, co captain of the Kiwi Ferns. Here's McGregor getting her kick high down the ground under pressure. Get as much distance as she would have liked, bringing Tamika Upton onto the ball for her first catch of the evening. Well, the Kiwi Ferns certainly put in a better set of six there, but I think handing the ball over at the 40 metre mark is not going to be enough. Offload from Sergis invites Aiken to go at them. Now Kelly finds some room. Isabel Kelly careers inside the 20. Clydesdale through Aiken again. Lauren Brown. Hitting Taufa, wrapped up by Natessa Bullet. Brigginshaw now, Upton, catch and pass. And here's the debutante, Whitfield. Hard to get a hold of, very effective in NRLW 23. And rewarded with this Australian debut. As Brown drifts towards the middle of the ground. Kezi Apps, the offload, putting Aiken under pressure. She couldn't take the ball. Abigail Roach was there and forced the error. Well, coach, Gillaroo's coach Brad Donald said that the pressure that the Kiwi Ferns put the Gillaroos under made them produce football that was clunky. And it's, it's a repeat performance here, that pressure of the defence by the Kiwi Ferns. Brooke Anderson in that dummy half roll, finding Leanne Papanga. I love the story of Brooke Anderson. Rugby sevens and one an Australian contract in rugby, but two shoulder recos, ACL and Achilles. She quit rugby league, taking too big a toll. Went and worked in construction, but had a scratch or an itch that she had to scratch. She came back to footy and making every post a winner. As an eel, as a shark, she's out there as number nine for New Zealand. There she is in shot in that dummy half roll. McGregor. Just inside the 40, looking for a 40, 30 early in this one for New Zealand. And it looks like she's nailed it, Racine McGregor. Yeah, clap your hands, Racine. Big play from the New Zealand number seven. 
Yeah, that's a great kick by Ray McGregor. She's known for her awesome uh, kicking game, but I'm clapping my hands here too. Racy McGregor, great break to get your team down in the attacking zone. Had one of them through the NRLW competition as well, playing with St. George Illawarra, her second stint as a dragon. And her boot puts the Kiwi Ferns on the attack. McGregor flat and short for Anessa Biddle. Vanulla's players player and rookie of the year, 21-year-old Anessa Biddle. Georgia Hale. Tyler Nathan Wong goes on for Bullet. She's a try-scoring edge forward of Tessa Bullet. Five tries in ten games for the Roosters this year. Now Hale on for Nevada George into that starting role. The first year West Tiger at NRLW level. McGregor out the back. Nichols, ball to ground, it's picked up cleanly by Shanice Parker, but then lost. And even though Abigail Roach has fielded the ball, it will be an error against New Zealand. So there's Abigail Roach, but Shanice Parker, she's gone from centre to full-back to wing across the three games she's played most recently for the Kiwi Ferns. Yeah, and she's played every position terribly well. Now, that's great jamming defence there by Jamie Chapman. Good communication between her and her inside defensive player, Izzy Kelly. And forcing the error there from the Kiwi Ferns. What a night on Fox League straight after this. It's kangaroos against Kiwis. The men go at it. Andrew Voss, Cooper Cronk, Steve Roach, Lara Pitt to bring you all the action here on Fox League. It looms as a great game after the Kiwis 50 nil romp against Samoa. Get up there, the ball, ball. So the Jillaroos, 16-10 winners against the Kiwi Ferns in week one. Since then, New Zealand 28-10 winners against Tonga. Well, the Kiwi Ferns actually kept the Jillaroos scoreless in the second half. They managed to score a try in the second half, uh, the Kiwi Ferns did, but um, they just need to get out of the gates early, and I think they can run away with this. Aiken finding Clydesdale. Part of the World Cup final win last year, Yasmin Clydesdale, as we see Aiken measure this kick and across there in great position. It's Racine McGregor. While they're on this long losing streak, the Kiwi Ferns against Australia, they did go down only 10-8 during the group stage of the World Cup before that 54-4 obliteration in the final. But two of their last three meetings have been close and players like Mele Hafunga have joined the team. As we see Michael as Kiwis enter Amy Park in Melbourne. James Fisher-Harris, Leo Thompson there. Won't it be a willing battle through the middle tonight? That game up next is McGregor, just outside the 40 this time. Goes straight to Ja'Kia Whitfield. Not only making her Jillaroos debut, but some big signing news for Ja'Kia during the week. Absolutely. Ja'Kia Whitfield, who was signed with the Tigers, obviously just until the end of 2023, she's picked up a contract till the end of 2026 with the North Queensland Cowboys. Great coup for Ben Jeffries. Nine games this season as a Tiger. Four tries. The Australians in good position again. A long ball from Aitken out to Jamie Chapman, this big, strong winger. Thunders in for the first try to the Jillaroos. She takes them stopping from close range. Taryn Aiken knows it, and Jamie Chapman does the rest. Jamie Chapman will always be the first player in defence. Now, as you can see coming up on the replay, they just had the numbers out there on the left, and I think it's Shanice Parker that was stuck in two minds here. If you're going to come up, you've got to take the player with the ball, and if it's Jamie Chapman, you're going to need a couple of players to be able to stop her. She's tall, she's strong, she's agile, and she's opened up the points for the Jillaroos. She scored three tries against France at the World Cup. Once she gets going, she's hard to stop. You only need to go back to this year's grand final. 
Gold Coast Titans went down against Newcastle, but Jamie went in for a hat-trick. Every game at centre for the Titans this season. Nine games, nine tries as a Titan, and here she is over in Australian colours again. She is quite the finisher, Tasha. She certainly is, and that was that great vision, that great ball by uh, Taryn Aiken, who sets up so many tries. She saw the jamming defence. She loaded, put a bit of extra fire on that pass, and it found Jamie Chapman. We wondered who would kick. Ali Brigginshaw is one option, but here's Lauren Brown out near the sideline. Good through the air, even better. Over the crossbar, 6-0, Australia. Lauren Brown, she's great with the goal conversions. And she's, she actually kicked 30 goals in uh, last year's World Cup. So very, very reliable. There's that long pass, great vision by Taryn Aiken. And I think you just saw in the back there a little bit of contact on Taryn Aiken. But she's up, she should be OK. So prominent in terms of try assists during NRLW this year. And there's a try assist for that player, Jamie Chapman. 21-year-old, so much footy ahead of her. Product of the Kernel Stingrays in the Sutherland Shire is Shannon Martor returns the kickoff. You'd think scoring a hat trick of tries in a grand final would be enough to give your Titans team a win, but full credit to the Newcastle Knights. It came back, fought back, and won that grand final. Three tries in a grand final, not always enough to win it. Just ask Ezra Mann. So Jamie Chapman and Ezra Mam on NRL Grand Final Day. Very good point, Maddie. Good point. Here's Kezi Apps. She was a try scoring forward during NRLW, scoring in four consecutive weekends. In fact, she went over in five of six weekends. A real purple patch mid-season at West Tigers. And as Lauren Brown goes to Taufa now, it's put down by Shannon Martor. Up in her grill, Nevada George gets the result she was after. And now it's compounded by Lauren Brown staying on the tackle player, Angelina Takaranga Katoa. Yeah, Angelina kept fighting in that tackle, but you could hear the referee, Linda Sharp, calling out, held and must get off that player a lot faster than that. So the error from Shannon Martor, who's been fantastic to start the game. The most runs in the contest so far. Nearly 50 run metres early on for Shannon Martor. But Nevada George has possession. Now she pushes the pass. That's a knock on. So New Zealand can't afford these errors. We saw one from the kickoff to the game when New Zealand didn't field it properly. There's a pushed pass against a side as good as Australia. They need to be really disciplined this evening. Yeah, they're in a fine attacking position there off the back of a penalty. And I think that's on the first or second tackle that they've coughed it up and given the Gillaroos a chance to go on the attack here from a centre field scrum. Here's Tamika Upton gliding through a hole again. Tamika away from RP Nichols, but then the ball gets away from the Australian fullback. Well, she was looking to, to pass the ball on her inside there to Jakaya Whitfeld. And we know once Jakaya gets that ball in her hand, she's very, very hard to stop, as is this Dallium Award win winner, Tamika Upton. But here she looks to pass it, but she saw, I think, uh, Angelina Takaranga Katoa coming at her, and she decided, no, I'll hang on to it. Already slipped out of her fingers. Karen Murphy, medalist as player of the grand final for the last two years. The first player to pick up the Dally M and the Karen Murphy medal in the same season, Tamika Upton. She was the grand final match winner with two tries, the star of the game. Absolute household name, an absolute star, you said it, man. I can't believe she only made a debut for Australia two weeks ago. Katawa. We've mentioned Jakaya Whitfeld signing with North Queensland until 2026. Well, Tamika's wrapped up at Newcastle until 2027. Yes, a very wise signing, that one. If you can, if you can land Tamika Upton and keep her for, you know, a good four or five years, you've done exceptionally well. So, Coach Ron Griffiths, well done. 
The kick from Tyler, Nathan Wong, high across the ground towards Whitfeld. Under no pressure, she makes the catch, then stands up the would-be defenders and angles towards Georgia Hale. Ja'Kai Whitfield on debut, not afraid to get her hands dirty, and that's all, always good for a debutante. She's had several runs of the ball already. And is Hale involved in another tackle? Watch her tackle count in this game. She had 42 against the Aussies a fortnight ago, 37 last week against Tonga, and she's the all-time record holder in the history of NRLW. Georgia Hale, part of every season. Brigginshaw finding Koenig, who thought about passing for Sergis. Fifteen minutes gone, just the one try to Jamie Chapman, set up by the 5'8 there, Taryn Aiken, strong carry, Clydesdale. Attracting three defenders, still refusing to go to ground, and the quick play, the ball. Nice from Yasmin Clydesdale. Aitken goes high, Nichols gets a foot in goal and makes the catch. Kelly was there applying pressure. They'll come over to the 20 metre line. A seven tackle set earned by Arpi Nichols. Yeah, great display, confident take there by uh, Arpi Nichols. She's been playing for the Kiwi Ferns since 2017, playing her 13th test match. Diane Tafanga, another, another of the 21 year olds, Tashi. Look across this New Zealand lineup, and boy, the future looks bright. Young, exciting talent. Sure does, and every single player out there has an NRLW contract and all played this season. So they're coming off the most competitive, the longest NRLW season. and. They're playing their best footy right here, right now. Sergis comes up with the ball here. A steal from Jess Sergis. In great position as well. Just inside the opposition half, so... The Aussies pinch one. Can they pinch another try here? Keziaps. Tackled by Takaranga Katoa. Jess Sergis, one of the best thieves, thieves in the game. Known for her one-on-one -on -one strips. Here's Kelly. So the two Roosters centres on either side of the ground, Sergis and Kelly. Aiken on to Brown. Riley Brigginshaw. Here's Sergis. Almost pulling free of the tackle. In fact, she does. She gets away from Bullet. She's still going. What a carry. Final play is Brigginshaw spots a hole. Ali flicks it out the back. It's off New Zealand. Picked up by RP Nichols. We've been talking about the youthfulness of this Kiwi Ferns lineup. Well, RP is the veteran at 30 years of age. She's the oldest. As Mela Hifunga tries to wind up. How damaging has she been in the Pacific Championships? 14 tackle busts against the Gillaroos game one. 13 tackle busts. Last weekend against Tonga. And a try in both uh, the Pacific Championship games for Mele Tonga. Valiant Centre of the Year in NRLW, or one of them, Mele Hufanga. Anderson. Puts the ball away. But Maya Hilmoana. Sent into action off the bench in this one. As Racy McGregor. Goes to Tyler Nathan Wong, the two St George Illawarra halves. Ricky Henry opting to use that combination, and Whitfield is stopped abruptly. Good tackle, Brooke Anderson. Jamie Chapman, long way from her wing, doing some work through the middle effectively. Well, it's exactly what happened in the in the first match two weeks ago. You found the, the centres and the and the wings were taking the most carries, giving their forwards a little bit of a breather so that they can work hard in defence. Nice and direct by the Australians. First thought is to run hard, run straight, setting the game up. Simple plan, but effective. Now Koenig goes to Sergis, a nice flat short ball, well read by the defence. 
Brown quickly into dummy half. Koenig with some room. She dummies on the inside. Takes the line on. Gets it away now. Upton. Upton gets to ground. And Tamika Upton is in again. Two games for Australia. Three tries for Australia. And that count will balloon as the years tick by. Unbelievable, Tamika Upton. No surprises that she's going to cross the line in every single game that she plays in. But it's the work here from her second rower, Olivia Koenig. Look at that little dummy. The defence bought into it. She kept driving the legs. Tamika Upton, always smart enough to keep following up and supporting. There's that dummy. It made Brooke Anderson stay flat-footed there. And then she's looking around, Tamika, where are you? I know you're always pushing up. Harvey Nichols does her best to try and prevent it, but to make it up and over for another try. Gillaroos. That front on shot showed the effort needed by it to make it to firstly keep the ball, then get it to ground, and she did it really well. The ball tried to get away. Here's Koenig's offload. Watch this. It's out, it's out. Harvey nearly knocked that out then. So I'm just gonna hold the conversion attempt here because maybe it was Tries lost into in. RP Nichols. Maintaining possession. Yeah, Belinda Sharp sends it to the bunker. We've cleared all play all aspects of play up until this point. Liam Kennedy making the decision here. Just looking at possession from Tamika Upton. I was also asking the question if she was tackled before the ball, but they've cleared that element of it. Tamika Upton loses possession while the New Zealand player has maintained contact with the ball, which is a knock-on decision made. Yeah, the replay. Well, I thought she'd done well to hold it. In fact, she's lost it into RP Nichols. No try. But that was a heroic effort by RP Nichols. We talk about the great fullbacks of the so game. That was a fullback a on a fullback. And this time, the Kiwi Ferns number one coming up trumps. RP Nichols was there when NRLW started in 2018, the first couple of years at the Warriors. One season at the Gold Coast, fresh from her first year at Expansion Club Canberra. She was her normal, consistent, reliable best. Well, there's such a wealth of talent in the Kiwis, in that Auckland competition. I've had several, well, a couple of very high profile, high footy IQ uh, past NRL players suggest that that should be the next team to come in from Auckland into the NRLW. Just to make it grabbed before the ball arrived. Doesn't matter now, it's been ruled yes, no move. try. We saw a shot of Ricky Henry a moment ago. He won't be happy with this, Tasha. Another error. I was about to say, is he happy to hit the 14 minute mark left in the first half? Down 6 0, given they have been below their best and they come up with another mistake. Yeah, look, they're just doing themselves absolutely no favours. How many times have we seen this? Simple play the ball. I get you want to get to your feet quick. You want to quick play the ball to get your forwards ahead of the advantage line. But come on, people. They need to improve their completions as well. Here's Chapman tackled by Hale. Positioned to strike again. Kezi Apps angles her run towards the posts. Now Brown, Aiken, the step. Taryn Aiken takes the line on, takes a good tackle. Jasmine Fongavini is a push and shove in the ruck, but they clear themselves now. Heavy tackle on Lauren Brown. Now Upton. Brigginshaw long, it's a tricky take for Whitfield. It bounces kindly for her. This goal line defence from New Zealand, it's looking better and better. Final play, Brown goes to the air, across the face of the post under no pressure. The catch is made safely. The Kiwi Fern survive again. Jasmine Parker, or Shanice Parker, in exactly the right position. Yeah, the lion-hearted defence 
on their try line. They're well known for that. They did it two weeks ago, and it looks like they're doing it again to the Jillaroos here tonight. She was a fullback last weekend, Janice. And that occasion she was there as a winger, but playing fullback, defusing the kick, keeping New Zealand safe. 6 0 Australia. 12 and a half left in the opening period. Kick comes from Racine McGregor. Taken by Upton and she'll take tackle one just shy of halfway. So the ter territory heavily in favour of the Jillaroos. Yeah, the Kiwi Ferns have been starved of a good field position. I think coach Ricky Henry will be pleased that it is only 6-0, but a long 11, 12 minutes to go before they run into the sheds. Kieran Foran about to play his 30th test for New Zealand in the game to follow. What a milestone for a man who's been around elite rugby league for a long time, Tasha. 30 tests for your country. Absolutely amazing. Brig and Shaw, here's Upton. In behind Lauren Brown, they had to surrender in that play. In round figures, the Jillaroos with 60% of the ball and 85% of the territory. Aiken High, another test for Shanice Parker and doesn't even get her hands to the ball. It's knocked on Jamie Chapman. Yeah, knock on. Knock on Australia first. Hand over. Well, that could be dangerous, setting your feet on the ground and waiting for the ball to come against the height the and leap of Jamie Chapman. Absolutely. Very lucky to, to get away with that. Uh, the Kiwi Ferns, because standing there under that, and Jamie Chapman hunting down, just unable to hang on to it. She's knocked that on. It's another reprieve for the Kiwi Ferns. Yeah, the replay underlining. What an opportunity that was for Australia. There's a mismatch in the air, and Chapman couldn't complete the catch. So still, despite this statistical hurdle, the Kiwi Ferns stay right in the game. Well, they're looking a bit better now, a bit more settled. They've got their forwards running straight and hard. This is a bit like their test a fortnight ago, with Australia on top for the first half, but unable to have any points. And now, Uppy Nichols goes through, takes a tackle from Upton in conjunction with Brigginshaw in cover. Final play. The Kiwi Ferns go to Racine McGregor, who chips across the ground. Parker gets it. She tried to catch and pass for Roach. Doesn't execute, and they'll hand it back to Australia. Well, that's that boot of Ray McGregor. You saw it time and time again. She leads the figures in the NRLW for try assists off the boot. Nearly manages another one. If Shanice was able to hang on to that and then pass it out across to the winger, it was try time for the Kiwi Ferns. Former Dragon, current Cronulla Shark, Emma Tonegato out there in Jersey 14 in the utility role. Kearney. So it's not to use Tonegato. Tackled by Hale. Certainly from the Australians as they shift it now to Clydesdale. Gallium, second rower of the year. And now there's a mistake. It's ruled error by Yasmin, and the look tells the story. Well, was it Ray McGregor? Did she have anything to do with this? Was there something untoward in that? Because there's definitely a few players involved in that tackle. As soon as you plant the ball, the onus goes back onto the attacking player, but it was one of those 50-50 calls, perhaps 55-45, given the ball plan. As soon as the ball is planted like that, the onus is on you. Had she held the ball and copped that second push, maybe the decision goes the other way. Yeah, but as usual, Belinda Sharp on the ball. The game is in good hands. Up together! Tyler Nathan Wong appealing for a penalty and getting it. After the carry from Hafanga. Back to back. Mistakes there by the Jillaroos. Sees the Kiwi Ferns in great territory. We've been saying how they've been starved of good field position. Well, he's a red hot chance. 
Marshall, what if I told you the Kiwi Ferns have only had seven tackles in the Gillaroos half? Oh, I, I'd believe it, Matty. 36 the other way. Yet here they are, trailing only 6 0 and in a position here to level it up. Seven and a half to go in the first half. Uppy Nichols careering onto the ball. It's a strong run. Anessa Biddle, well read by Kelly and Clydesdale. Anderson. Nichols dummies and straightens into Upton. Again, Kelly is there lending her way to the tackle and pushing New Zealand into touch. Isabel Kelly. What a strong centre. What a big play. Absolutely. Izzy Kelly known for that magnificent defence, known for her strength. She had a bit of help there. There were three Gillaroos. But Arby Nichols continues to make forward motions. Can't get down. Can't get down on the ground. And she's carried over the sideline. Isabel Kelly, two tries in the World Cup final. Like her fellow Roosters centre and Gillaroo centre, Jess Sergis. There's another big play from one of the game's elite. Here's Sergis. Trying to break free on the other side of the ground, up and going again. Good metres, Jess Sergis. Great run. You can always tell when Jess Sergis is going to have an outstanding game. And I'm calling it now because she's had some great runs. She's on fire. So many similarities between Sergis and Kelly, the 26 and 27 year old, the two Roosters club mates, the two try scoring doubles in the World Cup final. What a threat for any team they're in on either side of the ground. Jess Elliston. Big few minutes for that player. Taryn Aiken. Clydesdale loses the ball. She ran the tough line straight and hard, takes the tackle, loses possession. Yeah, normally you see Yazzie Clydesdale hang on to that ball. Taryn Aiken, she's having a cracker of a game as well. But you can see here, there might be a little bit of an injury niggle here with Izzy Kelly. The player there puts her hand in. The, this is the mistake here by Yazzie Clydesdale. But uh, Taryn Aiken, she's kicked. She's taken on the line. She's fired out a pass. The defence just don't know what she's going to do. Most run metres in the game. Isabel Kelly. Second to her, Jess Sergis. So two centres lead the way after both ran for well above 120 metres a fortnight ago for the Australians. Sergis over Kelly. As we see Racine McGregor. They would be delighted to go in down by only six. Even better, they'd love to get back on level terms and there's enough time late in this first half. The Kiwi Ferns, what can they show us? Tyler Nathan Wong, passing for her interchange forward who started the game, in fact, Nevada George. have seen a lot of space for Hafunga. Nathan Wong. Gets the kick down to Upton. And they'll sweat on an Australian error here. Whitfeld, safe with her carry. Tasha, I've run through the big run metres from the Australian centres. Melee Hafunga, we know how dangerous she can be. Four carries, 27 metres. It's an unused weapon at the moment. She sure is, and the footwork it's not just the strength and the power, it's the footwork she can show at the line. Here's Koenig, ball away. Brigginshaw fights through it through the air, knocks it backward, then cleans up. So they'll keep possession with two plays left. Brown has upped and peeling down the short side. Surges, her ball goes into touch. Misdirected as she looked to go to Whitfeld. Well, I'll tell you what, Jakaya Whitfield, she's been given some difficult balls, managed to hang on to each of them. I know a winger's supposed to be able to catch every, anything, but uh, that one, we're asking a little bit too much. Way too far out in front. But Jess did manage to draw in the two defenders from the Kiwi Fern, so the pass 
was able to be hung on to if Kennedy, it landed its mark. Together. It could have been try time for Jakaya Whitfield on Dabu. Strong carry from Parker. That bring in the Cherrington out there now. Kennedy Cherrington. You talk about impact off the bench, Maddie. Great energy from Kennedy, isn't it? Oh, she's outstanding. All the time. And she'll niggle. She'll get under your skin. Tiana Davison out there as well for the Kiwi Ferns. McGregor, the big head fake as she goes flats and hits Biddle. Didn't fool Clydesdale or Aiken. So final play, McGregor high this time above Amy Park. Up and underneath it, she'll let it bounce. It goes over her head. And then the second bounce was tricky as well, but feel it. She goes straight to Whitfield. Yeah, another great run by Jakaya Whitfield. Ran over there to the right-hand side, saw Mele Oh, the one-on-one -on -one oh, strip here. Davison it is, Tiana. Well, stripping Brigginshaw, who saw Nathan Warm offside, ran at her. Just forgot about holding the ball momentarily. Nichols accelerates towards the line. Mela Hafunga passing for Nathan Wong. This is Jasmine Fongavini, the two-year Brisbane Bronco. Anderson, Racine McGregor. The dummy inside fools no one. Maybe the Kiwi Ferns last attacking play of the half. Anderson to Nathan Wong. Now Malay Hafunga! Good stop. No, she's got the ball down. Upton was there with the attempted steal, but Malay Hafunga, it's her position to pounce, and she does. Well, it was only a matter of time before this sensation. There's the ball strip there that gave the Kiwi Ferns the ball, but it was only a matter of time. Melee Hafunga running back in on the inside. She's just too powerful, Maddie. She goes over every single time she throws on a jersey. She's a try scoring machine. She's a beautiful person. We saw that in a little bit that she was mic'd up during last week. But uh, what a way to go into the sheds. 6 4 with a kick to come, eight seconds to go. It's been the play that has been so effective for Melee Hafunga going back against the grain, changing the angle, dropping underneath. And the sliding defence has to stop and prop and then find the energy and effort to deny this ball carrying centre for the Kiwi Ferns. Mele Hafunga, a Dalian centre of the year. It opens up. Mission impossible for Tamika Upton. So right on half time. Despite this statistical disadvantage, Mele Hafunga delivers the effective play and gives Racine McGregor a chance to incredibly lock us up at half time. Racine's on target, New Zealand are on target to snap this 15 test winning run of the Gillaroos at half time. It's one try all, it's six on six. Well, there you heard it. What an end to the first half. It is six apiece between the Kiwi Ferns and the Jillers. Don't go anywhere after the break. These guys are dying to get into your halftime analysis. Hokimai, welcome back to Sky Sport. As you can see there, the Kiwis have arrived at Amy Park in Melbourne. They'll be taking on the Kangaroos after the match. We're currently watching. It's half time between the Kiwi Ferns and the Jillaroos, and it is six all. It wasn't looking that way with what only a minute to go in the half. What have we made of the first half? Yeah, I think the, the Kiwis will be uh, pretty happy with how things were. And, uh, I thought that before they even scored the try, they'd be quite happy going in at 6-0 because all the game has been down their end. We spoke beforehand how important their defence was going to be, and it's had to be. It's had to be on point, and they're 
quite fortunate that Australia have come up with a couple of uh, a couple of errors attacking the line, but on the few visits they've had up their other end, thankfully just before half time, Meli Hufunga went over and, and drew the score line. Those errors down, you know, our end, uh, is that our pressure defence or Australia just being bad with the handling errors? I think it's been a mixture of both. There's been a couple of um, efforts of defence that have put a little bit of pressure on, on the Jillaroos, but there was also a couple there where it just the ball didn't make it to hand. But definitely fortunate for the Kiwi Ferns for those errors. Um, you know, they obviously haven't had much um, good ball sets, and obviously that wasn't a good start to the game, kicking it out the back of the initial um, kickoff. But, um, you know, I just think that well, the Kiwi Ferns have also had some errors as well, and um, I think going into the next half, it's going to be important to minimise Yeah, when there's time. a lot on the line and you know you've got the two best uh, countries in the world playing against each other, one versus two, you, you know, you get that. Uh, you know, maybe be a bit sort of humid conditions, no doubt about it. But I think also for the De La Rue, so, you know, when you're getting so much joy winning, you're winning uh, the ruck speed and, and you're, you're seeing a lot open up for you, that's when sometimes you try to force the pass or you don't hold the ball, a bit of sausage grips at time. Uh, when, you know, like if you don't grip it with that thumb, it's hard to pull that ball back and be in that situation. But I, I, I think uh, for Ricky Henry, uh, he's going to go into that break thinking, geez, I've got to change my half-time speech. He'll be a little bit embarrassed with um, where he is right now, will he? I think so. I, I think so. And, you know, the scoreline flattered the Kiwis for a large part of that half. And we talk about some of the desperate defence and some of those errors, whether they were forced or not. Uppy Nichols' try saver on, on uh, Tamika Upton was a fantastic tackle and a try saver that... Obviously, the Kiwis took a lot of confidence out, but to talk about the field position and the opportunities, Racy McGregor comes up with a 40-30 kick, gives them the first chance. The first two times they attack the line, the Kiwis are the ones that come up with the, the, the errors. They've got to take those opportunities. They've got to and once that's again, you mentioned it. Uh, up in Nichols, uh, three try scoring uh, plays uh, were stopped last time out, and then once again she comes up with a big play, Crystal. Oh, she's been massive at the back up here, and you can always see her directing. But she also gets into the line in the early uh, early stages of the tackle set, and you know that's something that is a bit worrying. But then she always makes the effort to get back as well. She gets back and gets in position to do the things that she does. But here again, Mila Hufanga too strong there for to make up and to stop her. But we're We've seen this time and time again, three games in a row now, Tyler Nathan Wong getting across there, running in overs, then giving um, a backdoor, just coming against the grain, Miller's so hard to stop. It's exciting once we get the ball down to where we want it to. How do we get it down there more often? Exactly right. I mean, you know, I think it was uh, seven minutes left to play and we'd only been down there uh, seven occasions or for seven tackles. We've shown that when we get down that end, we can score points. We mentioned we've got a lot of strike, got strike on both sides. Abigail Roach, you've got Malahu Funga who just scored even through the middle. Up, he's got to uh, chime in and do stuff as well out of, uh, out of um, you know, from the backfield. But I, I think the key is uh, territory because we know Australia can do the same. Yep. And we talk about errors. But they've got to be brave. They've got to be brave, the Kiwi girls, to move the ball. Because when they do move it, they're a lot better. When they play one out, on the back of, a, in particular, slow play the balls, they're just playing into the Australian defence's hands. And it's easy for Aussie to get line speed and keep the field position that they've got. Mm. When the Kiwis are moving the ball and they get it out to the edges, whether that's to Abigail Roach or to Meli Hufanga, they're a lot more dangerous. They get a lot more joy. They get a lot more opportunities to speed the game up and get control of that tempo. Hopefully more of that in the second half. For now, let's head back to Melbourne because, as we saw, the Kiwis have arrived and Daryl Halligan is with Kieran Foran. Kieran, thanks for joining us. A nice milestone last week uh, and congratulations. Um, the team, Jerome Hughes, is really the leader with Dylan Brown. Have they been reaching out this week? They'll do the job today? Yeah, they, they certainly were last week and uh, we're expecting those guys to do the, a similar job tonight. Um, you know, they steer us around really well. Uh, they're the generals of the side and I think they complement uh, one another's games uh, really well also. Moses and Fish up front, you're swinging in between them. Um, they're pretty professional. They don't leave any holes in the middle, do they? You cover a few. Yeah, look, uh, those guys uh, are two exceptional players um, and uh, two, two phenomenal leaders for our side. Um, you feel pretty safe being in amongst those two guys out there on the field. So, um, look, they were outstanding last week and uh, I'm sure they'll lead from the front again tonight. We'll have to score some points to beat this uh, Australian team um, with the likes of Matty Tomoko and Joey Manu out wide. they the threat. Yeah, for sure. Look, those guys showed their class last week out wide. Uh, that was where a lot of our points came from. Um, you know, swift ball handling in amongst those those uh, centres and, and, and outside backs. So, look, we'll have to do a similar job tonight. We know that. And, um, you know, we've prepared as well as we could have. Great to see you still tracking, my friend. Cheers. Go again. Ah, thank you, mate. 
Yeah, as we said at the top of the coverage, it's a massive weekend. We've got that game after the one we're currently at half time with. And of course, the All Blacks are playing in the World Cup, Rugby World Cup Grand Final tomorrow morning against the Springboks. We're going to start our coverage at 6.15 a.m. So make sure you set your alarms and get up for that one. It's a great week in a sport. Uh, Crystal, just quickly, if you know one thing for the uh, Kiwi fans to focus on in the second half. I think defensively, line speed is going to be really important. The Jillaroos have been doing it to them, getting up in their face, shutting down any opportunity that they have. So defensively, I think that they really need to work hard on life, line, line speed and also winning the ruck, like making sure that they wrestle and get, get the Jillaroos to the ground. Well, there you have it, right. It is six apiece, half time here between the Kiwi Firms and the Jillaroos. Don't go anywhere. Second half coming up after the break. Between Australia and New Zealand. But on the scoreboard, it's all square. We're underway in the second 35 minutes. And the kickoff fielded on the shins by Australia. And the pick up and run delivered by Kennedy Cherrington. He runs with purpose again, attracting three defenders. Let's see how Australia go through these first three tackles of the First set to the second half. What has Brad Donald said at half time? We'll get down to Lara Pitt sideline very shortly. But Lara Pitt and Tasha Gale with me. Tasha, surely completion's rated to mention. Oh, absolutely. No prizes for guessing Brad Donald's message from the Sheds. Possession has been fairly evenly split between the two teams. Jillaroos have enjoyed the lion's share of the territory, but. They're completing at just 38%, just six of 16 sets. Not good enough. Yeah, terrible completions, but a territorial advantage. And they get to the final play in the opening set post half time. It falls for Taryn Aitken. Kicking high up towards the wing. In fact, it's straight down the ground to Arby Nichols, who makes the catch and receives a penalty as well. Offside. Australia offside at the kick. Well, I was going to say good news for the Jillaroos. They've managed a 100% completion rate in this second half, Matt, just by getting one set complete. <laughs> but they've given away a penalty. Yeah, six of 16, not going to cut it. As they're returning the first half. Of course, they didn't get to their kicks. It was a huge kicking advantage by the boot of Racine McGregor to the Kiwi Ferns. Well, I tell you what, the Kiwi Ferns have shown themselves to be a second half of footy team. They kept the Jillaroo scoreless two weeks ago whilst they scored in the second half. So this, this could read as an upset. Offload from Tiana Davison. Advanced play much more than a metre or so. Tiana Davison, how cheeky. She came on off the bench, managed to strip the ball from one of the best players in our great game, the captain of the... Maroons, Captain Broncos, and of course Captain Jillaroos, Ali Brigginshaw. It's a big play. So New Zealand finding Australia's half early in this second half. Mele Hafunga, the try scorer in the shadows of half time. Now it's Racine McGregor completing. Upton good under the high ball. Tamika is wrapped up by a chasing Davison and Hale. Tamika Upton always finds herself in the right, right position to defuse those um, high kicks. But what about the chase from Kiwi Ferns? Look at the defence there. How many black jerseys do you see in that screen? Tasha, we've been hypothesising about what Brad Donald said at halftime. How about we find out from Lara Pitt? Well, not a huge surprise. The main focus was improving their error rate and completion rate and a lift in intensity. It was Isabel Kelly doing a lot of the talking at halftime, saying we've just got 35 minutes left to finish this on a high. Uh, from Ricky Henry, clean up individual errors and look to their outside backs for those yardage carries and put pressure on the Jillaroos. With some good yardage in this set. Late, Lara, as we look at Wetfeld, go to Brigginshaw. And Ali pumps it high towards the post. Shanice Parker doesn't get a hand to the ball. And now a penalty will go to the Jillaroos. Offside, they ruled that it came off the Kiwi Ferns. And then the 
it was picked up in an offside position. I don't think it was Shanice Parker who touched the ball. There was another New Zealand player in there. Come on. Well, I'm not too sure. You, you did call it, Matty. You said Shanice Parker leaped leapt up for it but didn't manage to get possession oh sorry a touch on the ball or did she and they elect to run the ball they were right in front of gift two points on offer instead they want the okay, full Brooke, six out of there now. Back foot here. Wait. Wait. Lauren Brown looking to her right and sending it that way to Brigginshaw now Koenig throws an intercept and the Kiwi Ferns are away only momentarily Tamika Upton with the chase now Miller Hafanga quickly grabbed strongly by Olivia Koenig. That's good defence, Australia. Driving this strong centre backwards. Yes, yeah, so we see that intercept there. To make it up and quick to turn. Grab uh, Leanne Tafunga then. And now it's Parker with half a chance. Wrapped up very quickly by Clydesdale. McGregor. This is Fongavini. Yes, Deceptively strong, Jasmine. Kennedy Square. Go for. Georgia Hale goes to the line. McGregor. Nathan Wong. Uppy Nichols slides through, and Uppy Nichols will put New Zealand in the lead. Nichols, a fine first half and a barnstorming start to the second. She's been absolutely everywhere, Arby Nichols, having an absolute sensational game, but it's a great pass here. All hail Georgia Hale. She's always doing the work in the defence, but look at this pass through the hands. Arby Nichols splits the, the Australian defence wide open, and the Kiwi Firms, for the first time, hit the lead. Here's Arby Nichols finishing, but you're right. Really smart work. Georgia Hale, then beautiful hands. Racine McGregor, Tyler Nathan Wong, the St. George Illawarra halves, setting up the way for Arby Nichols, who scored World Cup tries against Canada, against France, against Australia. She's been to two World Cups. Yeah, as you said, she started as a warrior in 2018 in the first year of the NRLW. Then we lost her for a while because of that dreaded thing called COVID. She's back firing. A warrior, a titan, a raider, and formerly an Otahuhu Leopard. A great junior club giving rise to so many stars of NRLW and NRL. And we'll have to check, firstly, ominous, ominous for the Kiwi Ferns. As Belinda Sharp sends it up to Liam Kennedy. What's the call here? All right, we've cleared all play up until this point. So Tyler Nathan Wong, has she run in behind Nevada Georgia legally here? Receiving the ball. New Zealand player catches the ball on the inside shoulder yeah. of the lead runner and causes a disadvantage to the defensive line. We have a decision. Preventing Ali Brigginshaw a perfectly clear pass to make the tackle on Arby Nichols. Absolutely, Matty. That's exactly what's happened. Tyler Nathan Wong has gone behind Nevada George on the inside of Ali Brigginshaw's shoulder, Penalty. impeding her Penalty. attempts or ability to defend. Just the contact there as well. But that'll be hard to accept by some because Ali Brigginshaw still had a crack at the ball carrier and made a fairly feeble attempt but that is the way that it has been adjudicated that's right but Ali Brigginshaw now. doesn't do anything feebly so I'm going to say she was in a fair bit and she probably knew oh, that she smart. had a claim there I'm giving her excuses aren't I it's a roll of the dice though it's a bit risky if that, that was the plan six year Brisbane Bronco the leader of women's football in so many ways, Ali Brigginshaw. Her 23rd test for Australia as her male counterparts are about to rumble into New Zealand. Payne Haas, Tino Fasua, Mala Awi. Playing handsies there with there's each a, other's name. There's a debut coming up for Tommy Flegler for the Kangaroos and Nico Hines off the bench. Andrew Voss, Cooper Cronk, Steve Roach and Lara to bring you that test next. We get it two weeks running. 
Kangaroos, Kiwis on Fox League. But right now the Kiwi Ferns want to go to the lead. They had it for a few moments before that try was taken away from them. They hung in in the first half. Can they cash in in the second? I still feel the momentum has changed in favour of the Kiwi Ferns. It's the feeling, isn't it? Enjoying much better territory since half-time. McGregor, Nichols. He's Roach wrapped up. Former rugby union star, one of so many to come through that path in the Kiwi Ferns lineup, come to rugby league and not look back. They're close here, New Zealand. One play left. Ash Quinlan at dummy half. Now the kick out towards the centre instead. Tyler Nathan Wong is steaming through. The ball beats them over the dead ball line. Racine McGregor would like to have that kick over again. Yeah, she normally weights them so very, very well. She's got a great kicking game, as we've said so many times. But a lucky break there for the Gillaroos, and they're now zero tackle over the 30. But you're right, Tasha. They've gone to the well once in terms of dropping Mele Hafunga underneath, close to the line. There was a perfect chance to do it, and they opted for the kick that ultimately was too heavy. Absolutely. I, I think maybe you heard me, Maddie, call out Mele Hafunga. I thought that's where they're going to. They're going to the well again. It's worked. Not to be. They went with a kick. So a seven tackle set becomes a defensive set that yields a penalty to Australia. They're inviting the green and gold into good position here. Aiken to Clydesdale. Tessa, let up now. Emma Manselman on there in dummy half. On for her debut. Big afternoon for Emma. Along with Jakiah Whitfield, the two Gillaroos debutants. Now Brigginshaw for Koenig, held by Hale. Anton Wong was first there defensively. Tonegato sits it out in front of Aiken. Her pass was meant for Clydesdale. All she could do was get her fingertips to it and knock it on. A frustrated Yasmin Clydesdale. Brad Donald. Holds his emotions internally, but surely the frustration's building in the Australian coach as well. Yeah, any other day you'd have Yazzie running the perfect line and hang on to that ball. But did Taryn Aiken, in her efforts to commit the defence, go a little bit too far into the defensive line? So Yazzie's too far wide out on the right. But we have a problem here with Ray McGregor. Did she wear the point of the shoulder from Emma Tonegato here? Well, no, oh, it's a head clash. Nice. It's a head clash. In pain. She's been looked at already by the trainer. And, and yet she'll be taken off for the 15 minutes HIA. So a head injury assessment will take Racine McGregor out of the game for at least 15 minutes. So if she passes, she'll come on with 11 to play. Key moment here, the Kiwi Ferns really starting to seize momentum and they lose their halfback and kicker. Such an important player in their attacking formation. You can see that Racine McGregor is not a happy camper. She doesn't want to leave the field. The Kiwi Ferns don't want her to leave the field. Coach Ricky Henry doesn't want her to leave the field, but Brooke Anderson, she can come on. She can do a lot of good things. So Brooke Anderson, does she go into dummy half and Ash Quinlan go into that halves position? Or is there another option selected by Ricky Henry? The next few moments will tell us. Is Anderson didn't play close to the ruck. I think he put Ash Quinlan in again at the halves. He did start her there two weeks ago. Look at the Australians number up around Hafanga. As soon as she gets the ball, they're trying to cut down her room and provide multiple bodies for her to deal with. Angelina Takaranga Katoa. Shooting out a dummy half. Meters to be had. And the kick from Nathan Wong, high down the sideline and over the sideline on the full. 
Well, already the effects of Racine McGregor not being out there to settle a team down, get to the kick at the end of the at the end of the set. Already, you can see they're a little bit rattled, and that kick out on the full, a great let off for the Gillaroos. Cherrington to Tonegato, back to Kennedy Cherrington. She runs hard into Quinlan. Mark straight. Wait. So the Australians starting to wrestle some momentum back. Tonegato slips. Stand up. Taufa. Again, bringing Quinlan into a defensive play, assisted by Maya Hill Moana. Emma Tonegato to Upton, flat for Koenig. The Kiwi Ferns were calling forward, no response, Belinda Sharp. Kennedy Cherrington, straight and hard, she's flung to ground by Hill Moana. Last play, Gillaroos, Taran Aiken. Now the grubber through the line, and Nichols pushes it over the dead ball line. Yeah, well followed, well tracked by RP Nichols then. Taryn Aiken, lethal with a short kick in goal. Okay, stay on the Gillaroos are chasing it on, but look at Arpy Nichols motor on, on to kick that to hit that ball dead. Stay on. Big week for New Zealand Rugby League last week. Kiwi Ferns over Tonga. The Kiwis, Michael Maguire's men smashing Samoa, and they're up next. The Kiwis. Are there more tries for Ronaldo Mulatalo? Jermaine Asako, you'll find out next as Kennedy Cherrington carries Australia close to the line. Trying to lead for the second time in this game after going up 6 0. Aiken dummies. And goes to Kelly. Well read by Quinlan. Good defensive work by Ash. Now Aiken. Aiken flicks it out the back. Manzelman to Kelly. Stop starts. She's wrapped up by Roach. This has been a feature of the game. New Zealand's goal line defence. Tonegato on to Taufa. Emma Manzelman and looping around Kennedy Cherrington. The defence was waiting and they'll change it over. Again, the Kiwi Ferns on their goal line stand tall. Yep, they're known for that line hearted goal line defence. Led by their captain in the tackle count, Georgia Hale. Already up to 34 tackles. She's on target to crack the 50. All hail, Georgia Hale. Help! Barring the Australian matchups over their last three games, the Kiwi, Kiwi Ferns have conceded 10 points, 6 points, 4 points. Going back into the World Cup last year. Before that, they held That's France to nil. Now, admittedly, some of those teams didn't throw a lot at them, but it's been the Australians and the Australians only piling any score of significance on the Kiwi Ferns. As we mentioned, that gap is continually closing. It's just a little creek, and can the Kiwi Ferns come up with the upset? Here's a kick back across the body. Josh Quinlan it was, kicking the ball straight to Whitfield. Luckily, the chase was sound because Whitfield is a strong ball carrier. Here's Sergis, a strong ball runner. Sergis up above 120 metres for the game now. The most in the contest by away. Here's Taufa. Playing her 16th test for Australia. Brigginshaw. On for Koenig. Again, they're handled comfortably by Georgia Hale. Manzelman to Upton down the short side. Surges away from Hafunga. Now she passes to debutante Whitfield towards the middle of the ground. Great contact Nessa from Biddle. Vanessa Biddle. What a play defensively. Aiken, where does she go? She kicks towards the in goal. Is it too heavy? No. Arpy Nichols forced to play at the ball again. And again, the Aussies force a goal line dropout. Well, it was a, a really well weighted kick there by Taryn Aiken. Unfortunately, Arpy Nichols has to make this go dead because of 
the chase of Izzy Kelly and Jamie Chapman steaming onto that ball. Australia's a force three goal line dropout to nil for the game. It's a mid range goal line dropout down to the 30. And Kezi Apps carries Australia forward again into four defenders. Well, how much petrol is left in the tank? They've done a lot of defending over the last few minutes. Taufa held by Hill Moana and George. Nanzelman, the Brigginshaw, long. Sergis, which is held by Nathan Wong and Hale. Brigginshaw. This is Shannon Martor. She knows one way, straight and hard, into Hill Moana. Does Manselman dart out a dummy half somewhere soon? It's Aiken across the ground now. Kelly, Isabel Kelly, Shanice Parker is in there, along with Roach. It's Aiken on the loose ball. That's tackle five. Last play here as Manzelman goes long. Ali Brigginshaw puts it in the air. It's out towards the wing of Tafonga and Whitfield and the Kiwi Ferns come yes. down with it. And they get a penalty. Well, what about that defence from New Zealand? They're known for it. We've talked about it. And the Kiwi Ferns, whereas in the last couple of years they haven't, I have not seen a Kiwi Fern side so very fit. They've all come off the back of NRLW um, contracts and normally fitness might play a big role as it has done in the last few years, but not this time. The Wait. Kiwi Ferns are still hungry. They're not looking like they're going to slow Wait, down at all. Up. Since half time, Tasha, no. Australia 70% of the ball. They've completed 7 of 10. They've had 14 tackles to 2 in the opposition 20. Okay, and no there, points to show for it. We'll the half time score Wait, remains. Wait, wait. Go on. On, and while on, this on. isn't technically the Pacific Championships final, Australia won the first game 16 10. The Kiwi Ferns are thinking if we win by seven, we win the Pacific Championships. Well, technically, they might be correct if you look at the for and against. Roach picks up. There's no extra time if scores are level, but there's a long way to go here still. More than 17 minutes. There's Tessa Bullet. It's her time in possession. A wayward pass, and Brooke Anderson knows that. Pushing Georgia Hale forward. Well, that was a horrible play from start to finish. Well, that just lacked communication right across the park there. Atessa Pule was not expecting that ball. She looked like she was just going to... Here, here it is with Georgia Hale. She shoots it out to Atessa Pule, who was not expecting it, but... I don't think, I don't think Georgia was expecting the push in the back from a teammate either. There was the bad pass out of dummy half, the unexpected push, the bad pass and bad take. Anyway... That play can be forgotten. They'll be trying to put that one out of their minds, but the Jillaroos, what can they do? Close to the 50 metre mark, centre field scrum. You've captained the Jillaroos. Go back in time. What are you setting up for here, Tasha Gale? Upton. I'm setting up. Get get ourselves into some good territory. You, sure, you saw Upton lurking there on the left hand side, and that's the way they went from the scrum. Shannon Martor. Originally, New Zealand dominated Australia, winning 13 of the first 14 meetings since then. It shifted in favour of the Aussies on this seven test winning streak against the Kiwi Ferns. Trying to make it eight straight, eight straight against New Zealand, 16 straight against all comers, but there's work to do and Sergis. Goes to Manzelman. The feet are moving fast. Out to Whitfield. Whitfield held up in goal. The debutante couldn't get to ground. Well, that is absolutely outstanding defence. If they've managed Clear. to stop Jakaya Whitfield from, from grounding that ball. Have no try. Just confirm the ball is held up, please. But I'll tell you what, what about the footwork of Emma Manzelman? To get the Looking ball. to see if there is a grounding from the Australian player. Well, that's going to be hard.
Are you seeing any categoric proof of the ball on ground there, Tasha? No, I am not. And it's gone up as a no try, I think we heard. The arm is always under the ball, just checking for all available angles. So they'll need some definitive proof. From the angles I've seen there, there is none. Based on all available angles, the ball remains up. Decision made. Tackle four, just wait for me. So this defence on their own line just gets better and better. No fatigue evident. But they must be feeling it. Time on! Since half time, 68% of the ball now with Australia. And there's two plays left in this set. Apps. Held by Brown initially, then Hale. Our last play here, it's Brigginshaw. A grubber is the option again. Off the legs of the Kiwi Ferns. And Arpy Nichols is there to dive on the ball. Arpy Nichols again cleaning up the ball. Always in the right position. Try scoring tackles. Getting the, the Kiwi Ferns out of problematic areas. Now here they are. That's on their third tackle. Still a fair bit of work to do. And great news, you just saw Racine McGregor passing her HIH. She's back into the fold for the final tenth minutes of, these game, of this game. That's important, Lara. The halfback and kicker passing her HIA. So they've navigated that 15-minute window pretty well. A lot of time on their own line. But not being scored against, and Chapman runs into a tackle from Abigail Roach. There she is, passing her HIA, Racine McGregor. Abigail Roach making that centre position her own. Scored a hat trick of tries last week, but just showing in that crunching tackle on Jamie Chapman that she's pretty handy in defence as well. Shannon Martor set her eyes on Tiana Davison, and the two forwards collided. Now. It's a Mama Taufa. This young, new look Kiwi Ferns lineup is hanging in. Do the Gillaroos have a knockout blow? Upton look to shovel it on. Malay Hafanga. It's a speed test. And Sergis says, I've got you covered. Then Kezi Apps arrives, and there's been an accidental knee to the head of Melee. Yeah, I think Kezi's knees have made contact with Melee's forehead there but I tell you what melee was off and it's one thing to run alongside and catch her it's another thing to bring it to the ground but just manage that and then with the help from Kezi it's unfortunate on a couple of fronts firstly on an injury front you don't like seeing anyone cop an accidental knee to the head we hope melee is all right but the Kiwi Ferns desperately, there it is, might have been more, oh. more shoulder. Yeah, I think it was. But then they, the were, they were looking for a quick play of the ball against the shot, Gillaroo's defensive line, and this HIA will prevent them from doing that. Lara Pitt, why was Kezi Apps back there? <laughs> well, she was receiving treatment on her left hand with the trainer. She was way back in pack play, and Melee makes that break, and she just runs away uh, and levels Melee there. So. Unfortunate timing for the 15 test veteran there. Great for the Jillaroos that she stopped her, but she's ended up on report for that. Yeah, shoulder to the head of a falling Mele Hafunga, who's been forced off HIA, which will mean the end of the game for Mele Hafunga. So one of their key attacking weapons is done for the day. Well, two of their superstars. They're about to get back Racine McGregor, but they've lost Mele Hafunga. Racine McGregor, Tyler Nathan Wong on to Anessa Biddle very quickly. Penalty on report. Is that sufficient, Tasha Gale? That's sufficient, yes. Okay, Tyler Nathan Wong goes for Takaranga Katawa. Ash Quinlan at dummy half for Racine McGregor after that 15 minute breather. Now Arpy Nichols gets it on to Roach. How's the Gillaroos goal line defence? Rolls reversed right here. They put it through the hands. Takananga Katoa. Last one, Emma, get out there. 
Still two plays left from close range. McGregor through the line, it's a good kick. Whitfield has to play at the ball. It's stripped by Leanta Funga. How will they rule here? Stripped, 20. Back to the 27 tackles for the Australians. They were going to go under the crossbar for a dropout, and the attempted strip to score has actually bailed them out. Well, they've just gone from good, uh, bad fortune to good fortune. Why go for the strip there? They, Leanne Tafunga could have brought Jakai Whitfield back Help, down Help. onto the ground, and then, then the Jillaroos have a goal line Wait. dropout, but Help. now they have the tap from the 20. Yasmin okay. okay. Clydesdale chews off a few metres. Was she actually looking to strip the ball to score, or was it just to, to impose herself on the Australian winger anyway? They give. Australia a free ride out of their own half. Yeah, I'm amazed. I'm not sure. Manzelman. A lot fresher than some of the Kiwi Ferns forwards. A player to watch in the back end of this game. As is Taryn Aitken always. Still two plays left, but not anymore. It's put down by Manzelman, who just tried to get out of dummy half a little too quickly. So a big error given the context of this game and the position of the Jillaroos right there. Yeah, that, that was a vital moment there for the Jillaroos. Emma Mantleman, who's had a champagne debut, great with her footwork as we saw earlier, but that time, rushing things too much, comes up with the error. I mean, it's not a game-threatening error. Kiwis still have a fair bit of work to do, moving up from the 20 metre mark. But there was an opportunity for the Jillaroos. NRL unleashed in Las Vegas. Peter Volandis on a sales mission this week, telling US President Joe Biden, you've got to get to Vegas, come and watch the best game in the world. I don't know whether... Biden schedule allows, but if it does, he'll be there. Make sure you're there. Visit nrl.com forward slash Vegas. Right. Hasn't the banter between the NRL chairman and the rest of the world been fantastic? Yeah. Bullish yeah. as always, and Pedro Valandis. Oh, I love it, Pedro. <laughs> I love it. And uh, just shout out to Mr. Valandis. If you want me there, I'm, I'm available. With me, wait for it. Wollongong to the White House. I love the Telegraph back page during the week. So, Ajilaru on report. Emma, head me together. Look at Emma, wait. Inside the final 10, the halftime score remains. Remember, the Kiwi Ferns won the second half a fortnight ago when the Jillaroos won the game 16-10. But the Ferns won the second half. Are they about to do it again? If so, they'll win the game. If they do so by seven or more, they'll lay claim to the Pacific Championship. Georgia Hale. Yes, I just see Ray McGregor doing some organisation out there on the right. Quinlan. Tyler Nathan Wong. And now back at an angle. Good run. Leanta Funga goes very close. Quinlan. Deep. McGregor thinks about it, now pulls the trigger. A kick out towards Parker. It's into touch. Is it off Australia, off Jamie Chapman? So New Zealand about to get the ball back. Well, you could see Ray McGregor. She was calling her troops over to the right. They knew she was going to put this sort of ball up. They were already there for it. Jamie Chapman goes up to spoil the party, but in the process, knocks the ball over the sideline, and the Kiwi Ferns, great opportunity here. Remembering, no Mille Helfunga on the left, off for a head injury assessment. They hit that way anyway. Brooke Anderson with it. Help, the last help. few minutes of Elite Women's Rugby you. League this year on Fox League. And it's a grandstand finish in Melbourne. Here's Hale, the co-captain. She'd love to go in. Racine McGregor out of dummy half, the other co-captain. She's close. Taufa scrambling along with Tamika Upton. 
Four out of dummy half. Quinlan retrieves the ball. Nathan Wong for Anderson. And they're forced to go through the middle, running into Shannon Martor and Taufa, two of the Jillaroo's better tacklers. Quinlan. Nathan Wong, RP Nichols, long to Funga for the corner. Leana to Funga puts New Zealand in the lead. Seven minutes to play, and the Kiwi Ferns are jubilant. Well, she's such a strong winger. Leanne Tafunga, just 21 years of age, signed with the West Tigers till the end of next season at least. But that's a great pass shot out there. But look at this. RP Nichols running into the line, winds up, puts some extra heat on that pass for Leanne Tafunga to catch and very hard to stop. Fantastic play. The expressions on their faces tell the story. One of the international rookies in this lineup, Leanne Tafunga. She scores her first try for the Kiwi Ferns. More than 100 run metres strong again, this 21 year old talent. Born Auckland, she came through the Cronulla Shark system, off to the Sydney Roosters for a couple of years, and now she's a West Tiger. Having been with the Tigers in a different capacity for a while as well. This season, two tries against the Eels, three tries against the Raiders. And here she is scoring a first international try at open level. And what a great pass by Uppy Nichols. I mean, she still had some work to do, but it was a sensational pass. She's having a great, time, great game. But this is a very important kick here for Ray McGregor. From out near the sideline, strikes it nicely. Racine McGregor off the crossbar and in. She tells the Kiwis in the crowd to make some noise because the mountain got a little steeper for the Jillaroos right there. If they want to win the game, they've got to score twice. Jess Sergis goes on report. So she joins Kezi Apps on report. Also Olivia Koenig. Three Jillaroos on report. They led it 6 0. They've let the Kiwi Ferns, including that try scorer, Leanne Tafunga, score the next 12 points. And they are about to lower the Jillaroos colours for the first time since 2016. Well, it's certainly looking that way, but it's a brave person that backs against the Jillaroos. Still 5 minutes 20 remaining. Yeah, right. A long way to go here. Tiana Davison. If the Kiwi Ferns do hold on, the story of the game will be their goal line defence throughout the game. Long periods in the first half, likewise in the second. And they, they just show no signs of fatigue or letting up in defence. Straight after this, Mal Meninga against Michael Maguire. Kangaroos, Kiwis on Fox League. The booze for Tom Flegler, Nico Hines off the bench. And the Kiwis trying to back up from that 50 0 win last week against Samoa. Trying to beat Australia for the first time since 2018. Trying to make it a great day for New Zealand Rugby League again. Here's McGregor getting the kick away to complete the set. It's fielded by Whitfield. And Jakaya straightens into a good tackle, Brooke Anderson. Well, that was a great set by the Kiwi Ferns. A 42-metre gain by the fifth tackle and a great boot by Ray McGregor, handing the ball over deep into the, the Jillaroos territory. And now the Jillaroos really need to motor on. Isabel Kelly. Inside the final four. Now Emma Tonegato straightens. Manzelman for Tafunga. Bandaged up again. Brigginshaw to Kern. It gets the ball away. Ali had no support. And she's dragged to ground by Shanice Parker. The defence isn't wilting. Ali trying to drag the penalty then. Linda Sharp was having none of it. Now Taryn Aiken's wobbly kick goes down to RP Nichols. 
Arpi and the Kiwi Ferns will be happy to chew off as much time as they can right here. Parker. They've lost their last seven tests against Australia. Tyler Nathan Wong. Here's Bullet. Otessa Bullet. She was fantastic in last year's Tasha Gale Cup. Otessa Bullet. Here she is at open level internationally. Vanessa Biddle on the other side of the grounds. Now McGregor, again, the kick is divine, into the in goal. Upton has to play at it, she's in the in goal. Back into the field of play, just what a grubber. Racine McGregor. Absolutely, she leant outside to her right. So as to put the defence, not sure which direction that kick was going, but beautifully threaded through, beautifully weighted. But of course, Tamika Upton, it's going to take a lot for her not to be able to clean that up. And she manages to get the Jillaroos back into the field of play. Georgia move! Whitfield pointed to go forward by Emma Manzelman. They need a lot of that right here. Upton, Clydesdale, the defence was waiting. Abigail Roach. Now Upton. Kelly. Kelly still going. Held by McGregor. So final play here with 90 seconds left in the test. It's Aiken. Thought she was looking for a chip and chase. In the end, it's a middle kick, not chip, not a bomb. And it's an easy take for Arby Nichols. Yeah, not, not the desired outcome for that. It was like straight down Arby Nichols' throat. Will the Jillaroos have another crack at it? Now the Ferns wait, just want to complete wait, wait, this set. Wait. Hang on to the ball. No mistakes. Nothing fancy as we go inside the final minute. Melee Hafunga. Sideline riding every tackle. Georgia Hale's not letting that ball go, despite the best efforts of Emma Manzelman. So last play here. The Jillaroos will get a couple of cracks at the Kiwi Ferns defence. Jamie Chapman watching the ball roll backwards into her in goal. They've got to go 100 metres in 25 seconds. Chapman wrapped up. There are no easy metres for Australia. Racine McGregor screaming at her team, trying to get them over the line here. Sergis. Maybe two more plays. Brigginshaw kicks, what's she done? Ali Brigginshaw, no chaser within sight. It's picked up by RP Nichols. They beat Australia in 2016, lean time since, and seven years later, they've done it again. The Kiwi Foods come from behind under a delighted Ricky Henry to snap a seven test losing streak against the Jillaroos and beat Australia 12 points to six. Well, 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 what a game. What a second half from the Kiwi Ferns, getting their first win over the Jillaroos since 2016, 12 points to six. Crystal, I want to come straight to you. How much does this mean for the girls? Oh, my gosh, I'm trying to hold back my tears, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just so happy for the girls. Um, they deserve that win. It's a brilliant game from them. I think um, their scramble defence and their line defence was amazing, just showing that they were turning up for each other time and time again and showing that they were playing, you know, with heart and playing for each other. So I just couldn't be more happy and prouder than the girls. You're going to make this pregnant lady cry too yeah. if you start crying. Goodness <laughs> me. But the goal line defence, I'm glad you brought that up. Monty, I mean, the heart and ticker they should... Oh, exceptional. You talk about resilience all the time. And, you know, I know the Australian team struggling in terms of uh, their position, well, holding their position, only 34% completion in their first half. But they did effort, that heart that turns up and up in Nichols, um, just relentless in their approach and what she's doing, stopping a number of tries and, and this um, Kiwi Fern side has been exceptional. I mean Willie, uh, as a coach you know, you'd be proud. You saw Ricky Henry then uh, watching on and had big smiles across his face.
Yeah, for sure, and, and rightly so. They would have shown a lot of the values that he had been trying to instil in the team, the spirit that they showed, as Crystal was saying, the resilience to, to defend their line time and time again, and to a point where it just frustrated the, Auss the Aussies. They just came up with errors after errors because of the scramble. Some of it was down to some of their deficiency and inefficiency to pass the ball and catch it, but most of that was from the pressure, the inside pressure from the Kiwis, mm. and to be able to do that and repel time after time, um, great response to what happened in Townsville, to stick with it, and a, a fair result, a great result, 12 But they should have kicked the drop goal, because if they had kept the drop goal, they'd oh. actually win the series, because they got the they uh, points seven differential. seven points, didn't they? Was it seven but, points? But, hey, oh, well, girls we'll take are it. amazing. Absolutely. Uh, they should be so proud of their efforts. Uh, wahine tour across the board, and um, we know this one's in tears, so uh, well done, ladies. <laughs> yeah, it was bloody good. Right, well, let's head across to Melbourne, because Madison Bartlett is with a very happy Georgia Hale. Georgia, from a 50-point loss at the World Cup to beating them here, how does it feel? Oh, it's honestly so amazing. You know, with that loss at World Cup, we were disappointed and we were deflated, but we've used it as a, um, as a point to build from and so proud of these girls to go up against the Jillaroos, you know, a week ago, uh, two weeks ago, and then to improve our performance today, just immensely proud. And for yourself, Georgia, over 40 tackles, no misses. How do you do it out there? Oh, honestly... I just leave the punch and the power to our big girls and just tidy up on defence where we can. But I think today, just proud of a, a massive team effort from edge to edge. And, you know, I think Melly's tried just before half-time definitely changed the momentum. What was Ricky's words at half-time? I think just playing really level-headed. You know, we were in the grit and the grind of it and we got out of the trenches and out on the other side. But, yeah, we were just staying in the cycle and sticking to what we, you know, we do best. And those are our effort areas, so really proud on our performance on that. Georgia, go and enjoy the win. Congratulations again. Thanks, Mads. <laughs>